In today's video, I'm going to read an email from Eric, and it's on the, the lengthier side, but it's, it's a fantastic email. And he says, Hello, Ryan. My name is Eric. I have been watching your videos now for some time, and whenever I feel myself in the never-ending depths of withdrawal, you are always there one click away, so thank you for that. I'm 24 years old, grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. I ran track and field in high school, and when I was at the young age of 16, I had to have multiple sinus surgeries. This is where my hell began. My doctor put me on liquid codeine with acetaminophen, and my mom would go dose me every couple hours as needed. And I found that every time I dosed, I felt like the puzzle pieces that was always missing was complete. Slowly over the course of a couple days I would sneak a tablespoon here or there and finally the day that I got my license I took it upon myself to put a brand new bottle into a water bottle drive around drinking it with friends. This began a vicious cycle of opiate addiction. Over the course of the next three years I would search throughout my high school for Vicodin, Norco, Percocet, etc. and I was always successful in finding them. Fast forward to 2010, when I was 18, I fractured my ankle skateboarding and the doctor put me on Norco 7.5 with multiple refills. When I had my last refill, I changed to a family doctor because I felt the Norco wasn't doing me justice anymore. My doctor put me on 10 milligrams instant release oxycodone with no acetaminophen. He openly told me that this is called hillbilly heroin. And if you're reacting to acetaminophen, this will suit you best. Ironically, when I ran out, best friend of mine's father was knee-deep in pancreatic cancer. One day, his parents were out, and we had the house to ourselves. And as we were in the kitchen making coffee, I opened up the cabinet and stumbled upon 120 milligram oxycodone. After scoring down handfuls of these pills, a couple, a couple days later, we came across a bottle of 180 milligram oxycodone. Throughout the course of a couple months, we had a heyday digging in the endless supply of oxycodone his dad had and didn't take, enjoying his bottles with, with free will that always at refills on time. A little while later, his father passed away, and my friend who was taking more pills than I had suspected had ended up switching to heroin as his mother threw away all the pills. He kept this a secret for me, and I always was anti-heroin as my family doctor throughout the course of the next couple months and years put me on Tremadol and Xanax, more Norco, more Vicodin, etc. Eventually my friend got kicked out of his house and fast forward two years later, 2013, he had passed away. I harnessed all the blame for losing him as I knew he was shooting up and I didn't want to be a part of it, so I would ignore his texts and phone calls. He stayed at my house two weeks before his passing and he actually ended up dying in my sneakers that I gave him. I continued my cycle of pain pill addiction up until 2014 when I was put on Suboxone. For seven months and since it made me anxious, I stopped cold turkey and switched to methadone. The clinic was 45 miles away from my college, so I would pay friends anywhere from $30 to $40 a, a day to drive me to pick up my doses. After doing the program for 11 months, I cut cold turkey and found a job at a retail store. I started four days into my withdrawal and life was going well for a while, 45, to be, 45 days to be exact. <clears throat> I got a job at a moving company and after one of my shifts, my driver who was working with pulled out a bottle of 30 hydrocodone that he was willing to give me for free. Despite my deep reluctance, I took it upon myself to take the bottle and 30 minutes later, I felt like my first time high all over again. After I completed the bottle in a matter of three to four days, I came across a different contact who had 10 milligram Norcos. I continue a vicious cycle of taking Norcos and Suboxone for six months until all of my sources got cut off. This is where shit hit the fan. I met up with an old friend from high school who I knew had an ongoing heroin problem and began to get acclimated in the lifestyle of heroin abuse. It started off with taking trips to Chicago, which is only 30 minutes out of town once a week. Then it turned to three times a week, then eventually four to five days a week. During this time, my registration on my car <clears throat> expired and so did my insurance. But I didn't care as I'm pretty much a stranger to getting pulled over. Well, eventually it caught up with me. I got pulled over near my college and my car got towed. I went to court and my license got suspended for three months, which was February of this year, 2016. I moved back home with my parents because I couldn't afford rent anymore as I quit my job right now right before the new year. 
My dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's eight months ago, and it was a huge burden to stay clean, but I couldn't do it. I ended up stealing my mom's car on multiple occasions, and eventually she called the cops, and I got a DUI along with a driving on a suspended. They had to Narcan me and bring me back to life as I pulled into my parents' house and fell unconscious. I, could, I would always use right when I copped, and since she was blowing up my phone, I knew she had contacted the police, and I took it upon myself to snort eight bags at once before unconsciously ending up in the front of my family's house. I ended up going to jail for 13 days, and I got what is called an I-bond, where the court bills you out on the premise of whatever your charges are being your first charge. My release date was April 11, 2016. That night I got out, I had a friend pick me up, and I started the cycle all over again as I went to Chicago to cop dope. Now I, I am completely off dope as today's my day three of withdrawal, <clears throat> April 18th. It is pretty embarrassing living at my parents' place at 24, but with my fractured femur that I got at the beginning of March, I'm not supposed to put any weight bearing on my leg until June, which makes it near impossible to work. I figure if I have enough energy to go to get dope, I have enough energy to find employment, even with a felony on my record. I am on a raw food, liquid-only diet, which I will maintain for at least seven days until I see improvement. My family needs me, especially my father, and I cannot bear to see him cry anymore, or see my mother cry anymore, as my stupidity that has been an ongoing thing is finally catching up to me. Please pray for me, as I am set on not going back to these demonic opiates, as I want to repair every relationship that I've damaged possible and continue onward and eventually find my own place and create my own life in the next couple of months. I was an asshole monster and a menace to everybody, including myself. I am finally ready to give this up and push forward. Please share my story so others hopefully will not make the same selfish mistakes that I've made. God bless everybody who watches your videos and you for all your work. Stay vigilant. Eric. <clears throat> See, I told you it was a good story. Thank you, for, thank you Eric. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, you're in a... Uh, you're in a good spot because you're 24. I actually, when we spoke and I emailed you, I, I shared that I was 26 when I got clean. I had a lot, a lot of legal trouble, no money, debt, terrible credit score, you name it. And uh, if you do the right thing every day, <clears throat> eventually things go well. So you're still really young, man. Don't, don't worry about the fact that you're, you're 24, like you mentioned, and you're embarrassed. You have to work on yourself. And before you know it, if you do the right thing every day, the ship will right itself and you'll be in a, in a really good place. All right, so if you'd like to share your story, you can email me at ryanacompsupport.com. In the subject line, put YouTube story, my story. Let me know if you want to use your first or last name or stay anonymous. Uh, continue watching. Leave some comments and support for Eric. And uh, yeah, leave some comments. Thanks.